Om Namaste and welcome to our yoga practice for hips and lower back. So opening the hips and releasing tension in the lower back very helpful, especially if you've been sitting for long periods of time, which tends to make those hip flexors tight and maybe overstretch other parts. So there's strain on the spine. So we want to balance those antagonistic pairs of muscles in the lower body by strengthening the weaker side and gently stretching the tighter side in a progressive series of poses. So the key is slow and <laughs> progressive, you know, be patient. Uh, stretching the psoas and piriformis muscles will improve your range of motion in the hips and help decrease back pain. And this opening can create an energetic shift that creates space for the birth of new ideas. So we'll start to ground ourselves, center ourselves, and create a sacred space and time in which to heal the body temple. First aligning the head, neck, and trunk so there's poise and balance directly over the sitting bones like a plumb line. Relaxing the abdomen to inhale and fill the lungs slowly to your capacity. And when you fill and begin to empty on the exhale without pause until every ounce of air is gone. We inhale humility, wisdom, and love. And exhale, offer gratitude and blessings to the world around us. Tara is a protector in the Hindu and Buddhist realm of belief who comes to our aid to relieve our physical, emotional, and spiritual suffering. Recitation of her mantra is a request to be liberated from the misery of the mental delusions and negative emotions such as fear, pride, ignorance, hatred, jealousy, greed, or delusion, which would bind us, <laughs> blind us, and we will achieve the same enlightened body, speech, and mind that Tara represents, not only for our own benefit, but for the benefit of all sentient beings. And the most succinct mantra, though there's many for Tara, is Om Hrim Stream Hum Fat. Let's try the first part together. Om Hrim, good. Stream, and the ending. Hum fat. Okay, all together. Inhale. Om Hrim Stream Hum Fat. Good. Bhumishparsha Mudra is a symbol of teachers and enlightenment. <coughs> And it is grounding to both physically and emotionally feel the ground beneath you. And it's named after the Buddha 
who called on the earth to bear witness to his enlightenment as he sat under the Bodhi tree. So we can take all five fingertips and press them into the mat. The opposite hand I'll just cup in front of the uh, hips. And take a moment to breathe in this wisdom, love, and healing energy of Tara to relieve any physical, emotional, or spiritual suffering. Now, please switch the legs. Bring the opposite foot in front. And then walk fingertips forward, bow forward over the hips, pulling the heels inward towards the sitting bones, lifting the armpits up and widening the back of the neck, bowing humbly over the hips without forcing, straining, or rushing. Allowing the body its own time and space to eventually open and create this shift. Jim, can you hear us? Yes. The, the sound is not coming through. It's not. Okay. I'll try and check on my... Everything's plugged in. It seems to be. Has the audio all right here? Yeah, no, it's good. Okay. Maybe the wire was just a little loose. That would, would happen. <laughs> As I move around, it can happen. <laughs> all right. And let's go right ahead to prone position, laying face down. All right, so we're gonna strengthen some of the lower back muscles with our cobra pose. So we have hands on either side of the chest, the elbows tucked in, and the tops of the feet pressing down into the mat. And push down through the hips and the fingertips and curl the head and shoulders up. Lengthen through the toes while you lift up through the back of the neck through the crown of the head and lower gently again so that you have time to rest. And once again, strengthen to the core, push down through the feet and curl the head and shoulders back up into cobra. Good, that's the way. And with this cobra, we can Move a little from side to side, rolling across the hips and the quads. Get a little massage in case they've been stiff. All right. And lower the chest for locust pose. Reach back with the arms. And the hands can either face the mat or clasp behind the back for Shalabhasana. And here, we're gonna just lift the legs. If you want, go higher and lift the shoulders. And take three complete breaths. Lengthen on the inhale and strengthen on the exhale. Very good. You're strong today. And rest. Release the hands and the legs and the chin to the side. Take a resting breath. You're doing good. Now, you, um, bend both knees, hold the ankles, 
If you're not able to hold the ankles, just push the hands again into the floor as you did in Cobra. If you can, lift up with the ankles and the shoulders, come into bow pose, Dhanurasana. Good, really strong back now. And release and lower the legs and the chin to the second side. And maybe it feels nice to just windshield wiper the heels from side to side. Relax the lower back. Now we have frog pose, Bekasana. So bring the forearms to the mat and the elbows under the shoulders. Okay, we'll start with the right leg, bending the right knee. Hold on to the right foot and bring the right heel towards the hip. Stretching in that quadricep muscle. <laughs> That's the way. These are thick muscles, so just be patient and try not to collapse into that left shoulder. Push down through the left elbow. That's my tendency. Okay, now release the right leg. So we'll switch and bend the left knee. Hold on to that left foot. And begin to draw that left heel in closer. Okay, try and keep the, the hips level. Right. Engage the buttocks a little, and the hamstring a little, so there's some resistance to that stretch. Good job, good job. Nice long Hold here for Bekasana, and we'll rest and lower that left foot down. All right, and push back to table pose. Yeah, bring the knees touching, and then circle the hips, going around, and one revolution per breath. Exhaling towards the back of the mat, inhaling, rolling forward. Letting your head and neck move around too. So there's freedom, joy, and playfulness. When you're ready to change the direction of the circles, go back, around, some fun circles the other way. That's the way. Good. And back to table pose. And here we're balancing on left knee. Lift up the right leg and stretch back. Now bend the right knee so the sole of the foot presses towards the sky. Exhale, tuck the right knee into the chest, and the nose towards the knee, and inhale, press the foot back toward the sky. So it's back and forth with the breath. Using strong fingers to protect the wrists. And now open the right knee to the side and circle the right knee Around. Complete breaths. And reverse the circles with the right knee going the opposite way. Okay, those hips feeling good. Lower the right knee down. And we'll do the second side. So we start with this left foot pressing to the sky and exhale, draw the left knee in, the head down, rounding the back. That's good. 
Remember strong fingers. You'll be seeing a little bit of white around the edges of your fingernails if you're really pressing with the fingertips. Great. Let's go on to the circles. The left knee is now circling. Very good. That's right. All right, and reverse circles. Okay, doing great here. And those hips strong. Strengthen and then we'll stretch at the end. Lower the knees and we'll lift up. Uh, we're going down to child's pose. <laughs> down to the heels. Bowing the forehead. Have a nice resting breath here. Lengthening the spine on the exhale. Pulling the navel in. Letting your body expand on the inhale. The back of the neck and shoulders widening. And now a little variation. Please walk the hands to the right side. And as you claw with the left fingertips, pull back through the left hip. So that left side of the body, the waist, the ribs, the arm are all getting a delicious stretch. And please walk the hands to the left and feel that stretch along the right side of the body as you claw with the right fingertips, but pull back through the right hip and down through the sitting bones. Still capable of breathing, complete breaths in and out. All right, you did it great. We'll lift the hands up, lift the hips up for our camel pose. And support around the back of the waist Engage with the buttocks, the inner thighs, squeezing the buttocks and the legs, press down through the tops of the feet and lift up in the chest. Maintain that strength in the lower back and try and go down to the heels one hand at a time. Good, good job. Lengthen the spine by Lifting the heart, pressing down through the feet. Excellent. Reach up high with the arms, lengthen the lower back. And exhale, sit down to the heels, hero pose. How's the knees feeling? All right. Okay. And right ahead here onto our back. So we'll start by laying on the spine, recline on your back. If you wish to use a strap to stretch the hamstring, put the strap over the sole of the right foot or hold the back of the thigh with your hands. Make your shoulders and head comfortable on the mat and press the back of the left thigh down onto the floor as well. Now on the inhale, draw the shoulders back and the knee soft. Exhale, you're going to straighten the leg and push up through the ball mound of the foot. Okay. Relax on the inhale and stretch with muscular energy contracting from the periphery in towards the core, from the skin in towards the bones. And be willing to back off a little on the inhale so you don't get out of alignment or short of breath. 
Some yogis will hold the big toe. Next, we're opening the right leg to the right side. So wherever you want to support the leg under the knee or the shin, you just open it wide. Good. And release and bend the right knee. We should uh, do a spinal twist and press the right foot into the floor. Lift up the right hip and twist across the right knee crossing over to the left side of the mat. Then open the right arm and look back over the right shoulder. Lengthening the spine as you inhale, straighten the bottom leg. And with the exhale, pull the navel in so you're safe. A twist in the spine. Good, I hear good breathing. All right, rest back flat on your back and straighten the right leg. Lift the left leg. Bring the hands behind the left thigh or strap over the left foot. Tuck the shoulder blades under the back and gradually begin to feel a deeper stretch in this hamstring and the calf. Backing off on the inhale and tensing the muscles a little stronger on the exhale. Now maybe over a series of breaths you have the ability to hold that big toe. We'll open the left leg now sideways. Take it over to the left side. Try not to let the right hip lift up. Okay. and bend the left knee. Press the left foot down and lift up the left hip. Begin to roll over onto your right side. This left knee crosses over. You can support it with the right hand or add more twist on top of the knee. Gently at first and as you exhale twist a little farther by contracting the navel on the exhale, engaging muscles around the lower back and the abdomen. So you're protecting the sacrum from misalignment. Good deep breaths, I hear you. Okay, release now flat onto your back again. And we have reclining cobbler pose with the knees bent. Open the knees apart and press the soles of the feet together. Press the outer edges of the feet into the floor so you can levitate the hips and set them down in a comfortable position there. You can use the hands to support the outer thighs or you can use the hands to deepen the stretch on the inner thighs. Pulse the pressure by relaxing it on the inhale and gently increasing the pressure on the exhale as you resist that pressure with the muscles and the legs. Finish this breath and lift the knees up and the feet flat on the mat. 
cross the right ankle now over the left knee. So the right knee will open to the right side. The right hand can guide it out to the side. If you feel like you want more of a stretch, pick up the left foot, thread the right arm through, and clasp hands around the back of the left thigh. And now bring your head and shoulders back down to the mat. And the left knee start to bring in towards the chest. So you may lengthen the arms on the inhale, let your lower back arch, and draw the knee a little closer on the exhale, starting with the abdominal muscles, pulling the navel down to the spine. And ebb and flow with your breath. So your body is feeling safe. It has those times of ease on the inhale. All right. So there are some variations here also. If you wanted to, you could straighten the left leg and hold on to the uh, ankle. Or even bring the left leg more behind the head like a plow. And those aren't really necessary. It's just whatever your hips like to stretch. So we'll finish this side and then move on to the second side. Put the right foot down and Cross the left ankle over the right knee. All right. And the left knee is going to open to the left side. And we'll start to draw the right knee into the chest. Maybe you're lifting up to get your hands clasped around the thigh. And then start resting the head and shoulders back down. Relax the arms, the back on the inhale, and then tighten the tummy and the arms draw in a little more with the exhale. Okay, so good. And then if you wanted more, you'd straighten the right leg, walk the hands up more towards the ankle or foot or even Start to rock that right leg back over the head into a plow pose. Yeah. Now, release back down and rest the feet to the floor. That was good hip opening on the back where we're not going to strain the back. We're just going to get the hips loose. So now we'll try standing hip openers. Please come up to your feet. And hands to the hips. We'll do some circles. Bless. And then reverse the direction, circling. Good. Just be mindful of each part of that movement. That's what I thought. <laughs> knee crack. All right, bend in the knees and start to fold forward. Continue exhaling, hands sliding down, maybe to the shins, ankles, or even the floor. Now soften the knees, inhale, lift the hands to the knees, draw the shoulders back, back is flat. Now on the exhale, fold again over straight legs. 
Inhale, bend the knees, half um, sun salute. And exhale, fold over straight legs. Good, one more time, hands to knees, inhale. And exhale, fold deeper. Now widen the feet as much as you desire for squatting down with the hips. So maybe as wide as the mat, the toes might turn out some. And continue lowering the hips. You can use the backs of the arms for support. In fact, use the backs of the arms to help widen the inner thighs. So squeeze the knees in against the upper arms or elbows, but push out with the elbows at the same time. Good, doing great. If you don't want the hands or don't need the hands on the floor, they can come up into prayer here. This is a great pose to stretch out the lower back if you tighten it up with a lot of uh, work, <laughs> okay? Relax, hands down and straighten legs to lift the hips and fold forward. Now lift up, inhale, arms to the sky. Now the legs back together. We're gonna bend knees, come into chair pose. That's good. That's right. Good. Now one more breath. Go down to your max. And then inhale, stand up straight. And perfect. Rest the arms. Okay. And we'll go on to a little balance here to open the hips while standing. Cross the right ankle over the left knee for a one-legged chair. All right, so the hands might be here at the heart. You might be going deeper. Some people, some yogis, will start to cradle around the shin of this bottom leg here. Come out of the pose, relax the arms, straighten the spine. All right, and we'll start again on balancing the, on the right leg. Bend the right knee and then cross that left ankle. The one-legged chair coming down, keeping the back straight. Left foot press down, the arms lift up, and exhale, hands to the heart. Welcoming this healing energy of Tara. And just continue with our Warrior One. Starting at the front of the mat. Make this the front of the mat. Step the right foot back for warrior one. Then bend the left knee as you look down to settle the feet, stable and strong, building strength from the legs, from the core, and then extending the arms at a 45 degree angle forward so that you can lengthen through the lower back, pulling the navel in, Draw the tailbone down, press the right heel down. So you're very grounded through the legs. Then begin to lift the eyes and lift the shoulders without any you know, compression in the lower back. Breathe and expand on the inhale. Exhale, focus strength into the core. Lovely, beautiful. Okay, and then rest the arms down. 
and start to bring the hands down this left leg. There are options here, obviously, you can slide down the leg with your hands or you can use yoga mudra, clasping them behind and then lifting them forward over the back. Okay. Most people find it <laughs> more convenient to hold on to that left leg or set of blocks under the hands. So you can begin to really stretch this hamstring, calf, relaxing on the inhale to any stage with the hands where you're able to lengthen the spine, straighten the neck, and then deepening the stretch on the exhale while simultaneously engaging and tensing the muscles that you're stretching. Last deep breath. Finish that exhale and then step the right foot forward and fold on your exhales. Uttanasana. Inhale and we lift up Tadasana Mountain. Exhale, rest the hands to the heart. Shine and glow with that energy of Tara to heal every cell in your body. And we'll step left foot back for warrior one. First, grounding through the feet and legs, and then lengthening the spine, pulling the navel in and stretching down through the back heel. Breathing into the kidneys, into the lower back, adding more spaciousness over a series of breaths, starting to look higher, lifting the shoulders higher, but not sinking or collapsing into the lower back, powering through that back heel, lengthening up through the thumbs. You good. All right, and then on to Pyramid Pose, Parshvottanasana, either using Yoga Mudra behind or gently sliding down this right leg over a series of breaths using blocks or the floor to straighten that right knee. Lengthen the back of the neck. And to breathe deeply into the hamstrings, into the calves. Very nice. Step the left foot forward, inhale to a flat back, and exhale, fold over straight legs, and inhale, lift the arms, standing high overhead, release, hands to the heart. From our warrior one, we're just going to step to Right foot back and turn to the side of the mat for warrior two. Then bend the left knee, adjust the shoulders so they're not too far forward or not rounding down, but you can lift from the heart, broaden the chest, and press down through the feet to deepen the pose. The advantage of the videos, I can see when I'm not in alignment. <laughs> right. That's great. Okay, and go on to side angle pose, the left elbow against the left knee, the right arm now over the ear, spiraling the chest to look up, pressing down through the feet to lower the hips, and some yogis will bring that left hand down to the mat or to a block. Okay. 
Good breath. And then release, hands down to the front of the mat. Step the right foot forward. And then step the left foot back. <clears throat> Coming again to warrior two. Lift up the sh head and shoulders. Open the arms. So I want to see everybody. So I'll turn around. Good. <laughs> so inhale, rolling the shoulders back. The head is high. And exhale, pressing down through the feet. Strengthen through the thighs. Good, strong poses. Good warriors. Great, yeah, you're, you're not statues. You're breathing human, living poses. And go on when you're ready. Parshva Kanasana, our side angle pose. Maintaining that strong core energy, drawing in through the navel, lifting up through the pelvic floor. Maybe you're gonna reach down. Lengthen the breath so you can stretch even deeper. Good. And lower the hands to the mat. Step the right foot back to downward facing dog. Aha. And relaxing the knees on the inhale. Soften the neck and shoulders. And with the exhale, draw the navel in and press the heels down as you lengthen the arms. Good. So turn the wrists so they're facing the front edge of the mat. That's it. Lower the knees down. Okay. So Fran, turn the wrists for it that way. Yeah. <laughs> There you go. And we're back down for lunge. Right foot forward on Janayasana. Okay, so if you need extra padding, put under the knees. Then lift the hands up to the right knee. Pause, connect with the breath. Strengthen into the core. And then grow gradually, organically, up to your monkey pose on Janiyasana. And then lower the hands down. And begin to straighten the right knee, folding over the right hip. To make it easier, bring the arms to the inside, twist to the left a little, and then folding with a straight back, squeeze the kneecap and hug the muscles to the bone. You can eventually work your way towards that right leg again. Okay, strengthening that quadricep muscle helps pull the thigh bone back into the hip socket. So it's nice and safe. Now slide the left hand closer so it's under the left shoulder. Then lift up the right arm and twist towards that side. Revolved triangle from kneeling. Beautiful. Lower the right hand. Now walk the hands to the left and pivot 90 degrees to that side edge. Once there, lift the hands back up for gate pose, Paragasana. The right hand is going to slide down towards the right foot and the left arm lift up over the left ear. You can keep the hand up on the leg or bring the right hand down to the mat. Maybe you're going to slide out a little farther to, or use the block under the hand. And you're stacking the shoulders, tucking the right shoulder under, pulling the left 
armpit back. Okay, and lower the hands so we can keep walking them to the back of the mat. And bring the left hand to the back of the mat, the right arm up and over the head to spiral the chest open and side plank. And some yogis like to take both legs straight. Balancing a little bit here. Working the hips a little more strongly. Good. And lower the knees down. And pivot back to the front. Where you can, again, step that right foot to the front corner, the right hand corner. Move the left knee back. Okay, so a little deeper hip stretch as we come into the lizard lunge. The elbows bend, but the backs and necks stay straight. You can come up on the inhale, adjust, align, and then stretch with more muscle energy on the exhale. Some yogis bring the elbows down, or one, or both, here. All right. Now, natural progression is to go on to splits. So we can, or, or do twisted monkey. Yeah, twisted monkey would bend the back knee and twist around to bind the right hand to the left foot. So that's uh, an advanced pose, as is the splits. So if you want to go ahead to the splits, it helps to have some blocks to press with your hands, or just keep the hands turned to the left, to the inside more. Okay, and that'll give you more space to maneuver the hips. <laughs> and then there are some yogis that want to come deeper, maybe down to the elbows. Again, deep muscles take time to stretch, so breathe deeply, calmly. You're ready, switch sides, drag that right heel back, and bring the left foot forward, and start with monkey pose. Okay. Hands to the left knee. Calming the breath down. I know that was exciting going into Hanumanasana right there. Gradually lifting the arms. Giving this right hip flexor a chance to lengthen. Bring the hands down and start to straighten the left knee. Maybe you walk the heel forward a few inches. Maybe you turn into the right side a little bit. Whatever you need to do to feel comfortable in the stretch. To relax on the inhale, soften the knee, align the neck and spine. Tighten the tummy on the exhale so that you're engaging all the way from the core down through the legs, pressing this left heel down into the mat. Big deep breaths because these are deep muscles. Please walk the hands around to the right side, pivot on the right knee. I'm going to turn around. 
and lift hands up for gate pose, Parigasana. And we're just gonna reach over the right ear with that right arm, press down through the right knee so the right hip can stretch. And as long as you're feeling that stretch along the right side of the waist and rib cage, you're getting the benefits of the pose. Some yogis aren't just built so they need a deeper stretch. So maybe that left hand would come down to the floor for them or some other place. They keep pressing down through both legs and toning the pelvic floor and the tummy. Great, and lift up, windmill the hands down to the opposite end of the mat for a side plank. Vashistasana with either one leg straight or both legs straight. All right, and release. Lower the right knee down and walk around again to the front of the mat for a lizard lunge. Widen the left foot to that side edge. Walk the right knee back. And then press down through the legs, tone up through the pelvic floor. Maintain that strength in the muscles so that when you stretch, the tension, the stress is evenly distributed. Soften that tension on the inhale. Lengthen the back of the neck and exhale, engage more through the core, the thigh muscles. Some yogis coming down to their elbows. Okay. Moving around to some other variations, if you like, the twisted monkey variation, bend the back knee, twist and hold with the left foot. That's not an easy pose to get into. If you want to skip it, do. <laughs> if you want to go on to Hanumanasana, straighten the left leg. And press down through the back of the left heel. So there's always a little micro bend in the left knee. You don't want to hyperextend the kneecap. So the more you're stretching, the more muscle energy you're putting into the pose. A deep breath into the pose. And you can experiment rocking side to side. And slowly release that left foot back behind. Yeah, I've done a great job with that. Let's move back into downward dog. Hmm. All right, now you got your breath, balance on the left foot and lift the right leg up, three-legged dog. Bend the knee and bring the right knee in towards your chest. Pivot on the left foot, balance on the right arm and stargazer, the right leg will slide underneath and through. The outer edge of the right foot can press down to lift the hips up and help you open the chest. Beautiful, beautiful, that's it. And yes, you can have it or you can go on <laughs> and keep going, keep going and stretch the right leg forward. That's your uh, flying uh, gazer. <laughs> All right, back to down dog. And that's a rest pose now. <laughs> and 
three-legged dog. Lift the left leg. Good, good, good. And bend the left knee. Tuck it into the chest and slide it out to the right side. Open the chest. Tilt the head back. Right now, levitate that left foot off the floor. Bend the knee, hold the foot, and arm balance, and a hip opener. That's when it gets interesting. You go back to down dog, and then kneeling, because we can rest in some seated poses now. And some of these seated poses are a lot more comfortable to have height under the hips, like a folded blanket. All right, so starting with Paschimottanasana. So, so. Press down through the heels and pull back through the heels so the lower back can lift up and in. And then press down through the thighs as well so you can start to come forward over the hips. Lengthening through the spine and neck on the inhale. And contracting in the abdomen as you exhale. Okay, good. Steady breath. Shoulders stay relaxed. Pulsing with the breath. So you can go deeper on the exhale, lengthen more fully on the inhale. Now lift up the back to a straight back. And Janu Shirshasana, bend the right knee to the side and press the right foot into the left thigh but meet that with equal resistance in the left leg. So we grip towards the core and hug the legs to the midline. This will help lift up through the lower back, lengthen the spine. Inhale, stretch, extend, and exhale. Fold forward. Again, without overreaching in the arms and shoulders. But just gently guiding yourself forward so the crown of the head stretches forward more than the chin so we don't want to pinch the back of the neck give that more spaciousness lifting up in the back of the neck lifting up in the back of the shoulders so the stretch happens evenly through the whole back Inhale and lift up, switch sides with the right leg extend and the left knee bent. I move the flesh back from the sitting bones so I can be on the front edge of the sitting bones and I can engage through the inner thighs, hug the muscles to the bone and very gently, slowly, and methodically begin to fold forward, noticing if there's any knee pain, you can modify, bring support to that knee, or just not to go as far, and to be more considerate of the body, to be more generous with the breath.
good. Doing good. <laughs> Enjoying this unique perspective. And lift up to a straight back and open the legs wide here. Lengthen the spine and exhale, strengthen the leg muscles, pull navel to spine, and you're going to gradually begin to fold forward over the hips, softening on the inhale and stretching more to the on the exhale. So the bigger your breath, the more time you have to transition. stretching, the more muscle energy you're engaging. Now lift the back up and lift the knees up for a spinal twist. Half Lord of the Fish, Arda Matsyandrasana. Pull the let right heel back towards the left hip. The left knee is bent in front of the chest or it can cross to the outside if that doesn't throw you off balance. Okay, so wherever you need to keep both sitting bones down, twist and gaze back over the left shoulder, inhaling, lengthen up through the crown and exhaling, pulling the navel to the spine. Loosen up the neck if it's tight with some head circles. And switch sides. I was lifting the right knee up, drawing the left heel back. Sit up tall and then start to twist around to the right side. Taking complete breaths in and complete breaths out. And release the twist and we come to auspicious pose. And when this is just like easy seated pose, but the knees now are going to go a little wider apart. So the heels, the ankles are more in line with each other. And draw the lower back in, lift the chest up. That's good. Another variation here is fire logs. So the shins then stack kind of on top of each other. I'm not demonstrating this too well. I'm sorry. <laughs> the, the, this knee doesn't need to be this high. It could be lower. <laughs> Switch sides, and if you're doing fire logs, then the opposite shin underneath or the opposite heel in front. 
Okay, so now I'm like this. And my Agni Stambhasana fire log. How's that working for you? Okay, strengthening the ankle though. Don't, don't want to sprain the ankle. If you need to, even hold the hands underneath the ankle so it doesn't get over uh, flexed. It's the knees that hurt, right? Yeah, because, yeah. <laughs> the, 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 yeah. So where, wherever you're least flexible, that's, okay. Uh, and then go Mukhasana. All right, our cow face pose is our apex peak pose. And this is one that I like the, uh, the as much height as possible in my seat. And what we do to get into the pose, usually I start with one knee in front and the other knee behind like this. So knees stack here. And then walking the hands back, I'm going to sit on my blanket between the heels. I know some of you like this pose, but this is a real challenge for many people, <laughs> including myself. All right, so you have the knees crossed, the right knee is on top of my left knee, so I'm going to reverse that with the arms and bring the left elbow behind the head, the right arm behind the back, and try and find that hand and clasp them together, or connect them with a strap, hold the strap in the left hand and dangle it down to the right hand where you can start to expand more in the chest, lift up in the crown, good. You're whiz at this. Okay, we'll switch sides. And so now the same way I went in, so I can reverse the left knee in front, the right knee stacked behind. Walk the hands back and gently sit down. Okay. So the knees more or less stack, one on top of the other. Now that the left knee is on top, I'll bring the right elbow up and the left arm from below, trying to clasp the fingers. And one side works, maybe the other better than the other side. If you need to, you can disconnect the hands in order to lengthen the spine and take deep breaths. Strengthen also in the ankles, so you're not over flexing the ankles. All right. All right, good. Take that final deep breath. And release the arms. Untangle the legs. We're going to our final sequence laying on the back. Starting on the back and just hugging the knees to the chest and having a little fun on your back like a kid. You're going to circle the knees maybe, figure eights with them. Maybe you want to do a little rocking chair, tucking the chin and rocking back and forth along the spine. And if you're rocking, going all the way back into plow. And gradually bending the knees, rolling the back down for happy baby. Pull down with the shoulders while pressing up with the feet to help to lengthen the lower back. You can play with any other variations you want to try where you can 
open the hips different ways when you're ready to rest just lower the feet and stretch the legs out widening the legs and reaching over the head with the arms like a star sparkling shining stretching every muscle in the fingers and hands in the feet ankles the legs the arms the back the full body stretch including the mouth the tongue when you're satisfied everything has had enough stretching bring your arms down by your side for shavasana let me try and lower some lights it's a sunny day a lot of bright sunshine here Get yourself nice and warm and cozy. Stretch out of all the space you need. And gradually let your body begin to settle, sink, and relax. You don't have to do anything more with your body. So you can just let it lie there. And you don't have to do anything more with your mind. So you can just observe what you're feeling. Witness the sensations in your body. Assess how the energy is flowing in your body, in the prana, and distribute this prana evenly and thoroughly through every nook and cranny. Breathe as though your whole body breathes. Saturate your body with this sweet, succulent breath and release any tension with the exhale let go of any effort and trustfully surrender to the floor as it holds you safe and secure good you're relaxing you're resting, you're giving your body the time and space it needs to heal and rejuvenate. For the healing energies of the universe to coalesce and give your body all the light, life, energy you could desire. You're a good person and you deserve this wonderful feeling of pleasurable relaxation, rest, and ease. You help other people so much. You need to devote this time to yourself for your own well-being, for your own happiness 
and your own delight. Enjoy all the benefits of your practice, of your efforts now as you absorb, digest, and assimilate all those experiences. You can savor them like a connoisseur or a sommelier sipping the finest champagne. Just allow that pleasure to spread through your body. So the face and the eyes can soften, melt and relax. And the neck and jaw can slacken soften and melt. And the shoulders and arms can let go and just sink into the mat. And the hands and the fingers can relax and release. And your chest and back can soften and release any tension and unravel any knots as they soften, loosen, and let go. Let go of any cares or worries. And relax the abdomen unravel any knots of regret there and just feel them dissolve, evaporate, and disappear. Relax in the hips and the legs. Relax in the knees and the shins. All the leg muscles, loose, limp, heavy. Relaxing the feet and the ankles, the soles of the feet, and all ten toes. Now the whole body feeling wonderfully relaxed peaceful and calm, so your mind can just drift happily, lazily, free to go to your happy place. A sunny day. Start to move in the fingers, in the hands, in the neck to eventually awaken your whole body, bending the knees and rolling over onto your right side, 
And just waiting for a moment there until your mind is fully conscious, awake and alert. And you're ready to continue on up to your easy seated pose, Sukhasana. Well, excellent job, everyone. You just did marvelous practice. Open those hips. Happy hips, everyone. <laughs> Namaste.